when you're looking at rare earth deposits, uh, you know, our view is, and I think the view of the industry is that neodymium is the barometer of, of the rare earth industry. Neodymium is what goes into rare earth magnets. And permanent magnets, rare earth magnets, are really what's driving the industry. They're the things that are going into the cell phones to make the cell phones vibrate. Uh, they're going into the wind turbines to make them gearless, which allows for less maintenance. They can be put offshore. Hybrid cars rely on it. So it's the uh, permanent magnet that was only invented in the mid 80s that um, is driving this, in, this, this industry. And we have about 20% of the deposit is neodymium, 20% of the total rare earth. We're really looking at a neodymium mine with credits from some of the other elements that we'll get out. We've been very successful uh, exploring the sulfur carbonatite, and we're on the edge of it here, and it goes all the way to, the, to sort of the farthest hills that you can see there. Uh, we found that it's very, very prospective for rare earths. We've found most of this core here is related to uh, what we call the ST1 location, where we are already established an inferred resource. We have a lot of experience in Greenland. We've been working here since 2003, and we started looking at indicator minerals. All around here for diamond work, there's indicator minerals, and we, uh, we initially got on the project because of that. Uh, we took it from Nothing, thinking there might be diamonds here to in 2007 establishing a uh, small diamond processing plant. Yeah, basically the, the discovery started here uh, obviously with the, the Gossiness Cliffs and the radiometric signature. Uh, so prospecting, we came out in 2009 to do some prospecting and uh, of course the first thing we found were some uh, good grab samples, uh, carbonatite running upwards of 10% total rare earth. And so that led us to believe there's something here. And uh, we drilled a couple exploratory holes from the bottom of the river southeast into the hill. And the first hole actually hit a roughly a 50 meter intersection, which we were quite excited about. And then it went from there. The carbonatite itself is, uh, is, slightly, is slightly oval in shape. Um, and again, um, roughly about uh, 12 kilometers north-south uh, the whole ring structure and eight kilometers east-west. Perspective zones uh, along the uh, outer ring structure uh, where Hudson Resource is targeting rare earth uh, exploration for rare earth carbonatites in the ferrodolomite. dolomite. Um, roughly about 40 kilometers of existing targetable uh, strike length uh, of which only a very small percentage has been drilled. Uh, they have had very high success rates early on in the first two years of the program and uh, I expect as uh, the geologic mapping and further defined uh, radiometrics and magnetic ground surveys to find more targets for them that the success of fairly large carbonatite bodies uh, will be forthcoming. The rare earths uh, are usually uh, associated with uh, fairly high iron, ferric iron. Um, uh, they are in general, rare earth minerals in general are uh, basnesite and uh, uh, also monazite as the principal rare earth components in, in the rare earth carbonatites. The ST1 at 20% neodymium over total rare earths and the ST40 particular at either 40 or 50% of total rare earths are targets that are found in few other carbonatites in the world. And this is going to be the year where we first get some determination on the economics of the project. Our preliminary economic assessment, which is due out this fall, will really start to wrap some economics around the project. Uh, you know, we've got a 14 million ton resource of 1.5% uh, with some, some uniquely high uh, levels of neodymium, which is important. One very important aspect of the, uh, of the resource, of the body itself, is that there are these high-grade zones within it. Uh, we're looking at 10, 20, 30 meters or more where we're seeing elevated uh, total rare earth oxides, including the 20% you know, uh, neodymium mixture, 2% uh, TREO, 3% TREO, 4% TREO. And I think that's really going to drive the economics of the project as we go forward. 
Greenland's an excellent place to explore and to develop projects. I mean, we've got a, a weather environment here that's almost subarctic. We're close to the, the coastline. It's a temperate Arctic environment. Uh, we've got uh, excellent uh, you know, working conditions during the summer months. We've got tide water that's open almost year round, uh, which is quite unique for, for being in the Arctic. Uh, we've got good access to uh to uh, open water shipping, a good access to uh, infrastructure for, uh, for power and power potential when you're looking at uh, potentially run a river projects and only 15 or 20 minute helicopter ride away we have, uh, we've got a major, inter the major international airport in Greenland. What we'll do in 2012 is enter into pre-feasibility assuming we continue to get positive results with uh, the geology and metallurgy. Uh, Following the pre-feasibility, we'll move into uh, a feasibility stage in 2013 and then uh, submit uh, a uh, exploitation application to the Bureaus of Minerals and Petroleum. And from there, there's about a six month permitting process, which again is one of the most rapid uh, permitting regimes in our industry and, and several years uh, faster than what you'd see in Canada and other jurisdictions in North America, particularly. Clearly, mining and mineral development is a huge, huge goal for this country. And it makes them very pro-development, very uh, proactive. They're pragmatic when it comes to licensing and uh, looking at the development of these commodities. I'm also, uh, you know, really proud of the, uh, of the group of people that we have here. Most of them have been on the project for a number of years. Uh, we've been drilling with the same drilling company since 2005 and uh, the production rates are fantastic. They're great guys. Uh, most of the, uh, of the uh, geologists, the local uh, employment uh, workforce uh, come back uh, year after year. We feel that we've got an excellent team that will take this company to the next stage of its development. No, we're really excited about the future of the project. With our first preliminary economic assessment out showing the positive economics of the project and a lot more drilling to do and cash in the bank to take us well through 2012, we've got a great future.